All right, so today we're gonna go through and I'm going to do some examples of some transformations and translations together. So we're gonna do this with a couple concrete examples. Uh, the first example, actually both examples use the same, well, no. <laughs> so the first example will use uh, the base function f of x is x cubed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the translation or give the uh, translation and transformation in terms of g of x. So I'm going to have g of x. This is going to be, and in fact, I'm going to color coordinate this sum. So I'm going to have 2 times f of, so have one half times x minus one. That'll be the close of the f part. And then I'm going to have minus two. Okay. So I've color coordinated this with the goal. I color coordinated this with the goal that I can see that I have the f part that's here right, the, the pink. The green stuff, this is going to be the Y stuff. And the inside, the blue, is going to be the X stuff, OK? So if you remember, I'm going to do this by separating the two things. So I'm going to have my X stuff written out here. And I'm going to write down what's happening in terms of the order of operations like I were actually calculating this. So for example, if I were to put in a 3 for my X, First thing I do is subtract 1. So the first thing that happens is that I subtract 1. And the next thing, after I've subtracted the 1, right? So if I plugged in 3, I have 3 minus 1. That would be 2. Next thing I do is divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half. So I'm going to multiply by 1 half. And then I'm going to write out what these things are doing in terms of our translations and transformations. So remember, x stuff, right? Everything about x is backwards. That's just this recurring theme. If you're going to remember one mantra, everything about x is backwards, OK? So if I subtract 1, you'd think that would move it to the left 1. But because it's backwards, it's going to move it to the right 1. So this moves it to the right 1 unit. Similarly, multiplying by 1 half, you'd think multiplying by a smaller number would make it smaller, right? So you'd think it would be half of the width, but everything about x is backwards, right? So it's actually going to be twice the width. So it's going to be 2 times the original width. Okay? All right. So this is the x stuff. Now, that's here, right? Then the f is going to happen. But then the green stuff, that's the y stuff. So I'm going to write that underneath. OK? Now I'm going to do the same thing. So if I pretend I had calculated stuff out, I replaced this f of stuff with some number, right? So I got did all of this stuff. I applied f. I got something like 5 at the end, right? Then I'd have 5 times 2 and then minus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply by 2, right? Because I multiplied by 2 there. Then the next thing I'm going to do is subtract 2. And just like we did up here, we're going to translate these into what they are, right? So. Here, right, so here I did it in terms of the right one, two times original width, like the translation and transformation. I'm going to do the same thing down here. So multiplying by 2, that's going to make it, right, remember why stuff actually behaves the way we think, right? So um, multiplying by 2, this is going to make it twice original width. And subtracting 2, right, that does indeed go down like we would think. So down 2. OK? So 
So we now have separated out what we're doing. And now we're going to apply the transforms. But remember our mantra, right? Everything about x is backwards. So instead of doing this in order, I'm going to do the x stuff in reverse order. And the y stuff actually goes in order. Okay. So going back, let's start with our original graph, our original f of x, right? We're going to graph each of these events one at a time until we get our end graph. So our first graph, right, if you remember our cube, should look like this with a spot at 0, 0. And this is just our straight up f of x, which I'll make a note here is x cubed. Okay. Now, strictly speaking, it doesn't matter if I want to do the x stuff or the y stuff first, but it's sort of a nice convention to always do sort of the same way. So I'm always going to do the x stuff than the y stuff. I would suggest you do the same because it turns out that's sort of the easier way to go about it. Um, but just so you're aware, strictly speaking, this is something you run into a lot, say, in physics. Um, you can actually separate which one, because they're orthogonal, and you don't need to know that. You can separate which one you want to do first. So I'm going to do x. So I'm going to draw a little line saying what I'm going to do here. And remember, I'm going to do it in reverse order, right? So the first thing I would have done is subtract 1, then multiply, reverse order. So I'm going to multiply by 1 half, meaning I'm going to make it 2 times the original width. So here, it was that size. So here, remember this is 2 times, meaning it stretches from the origin. So it's going to go out and up and over and down. So it's going to look basically the same. But if I were a good artist, I would have drawn this in a way that it was twice as wide. Okay. I'm going to label this. f of x is now, uh, sorry, not f of x, right? This is whew, f of, I've done the 1 half x bit. All right? And because this is a math class, we don't necessarily expect you to be fantastic artists. So if you want to make clear what's happening, you can plot a point. So the problem here is that 0, 0 stayed in the same place. So I'm just going to add one more point to show that something really did happen here. So the point 1, 1 would normally be on this graph. And that point, 1, 1, got moved to the point. In fact, maybe let me see. Do I have another color? Orange. Here we go. So let me do it this way. so that it's clear. <laughs> this might get cut in editing. We'll see. All right, so I'm going to add a point, 1, 1. And that point, because it got twice as wide, is now over here at the point 2, 1. OK, so this is a good way of showing, because maybe I can't draw it so it looks quite right, but I want to make sure someone looking at it like a grader, <laughs> would be able to tell that I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to say that the point 1, 1 went to the point 2, 1. Okay. So that was the first thing. So now I'm going to do the next one, the subtract 1. So next graph. And remember, the subtracting 1 means I'm actually moving to the right 1. So the 0, 0 point got moved over. It's now at. 1, 0. The point 2, 1 is going to move over 1 as well. So this is going to now be 3, 1. So I'll put that on once I have this drawn. And this is specifically now, right, I had f of 1 half x. Now I'm going to have the f of 1 half of x minus 1. So I'm going to have, uh, where's a nice place to write this? I'll write it over here. f of so same thing over there. So it's going to be 1 half times x minus 1. Right? And my orange point, which was at 2, 1, is now way over here 
at 3 comma 1. Okay. So I've done the multiply by 1 half, which made the 2 times the original width. That was this. Then I've done the subtract 1. That moved it to the right one. That's this. So now I'm going to do the y stuff. The y stuff actually goes in order. So the y stuff I was doing in green, so I'll move to that color. So here, I'm just going to write this over here, show that this is the next picture. So I have this. So I have this thing here, right? This graph is my previous graph. Now I'm multiplying by 2, which means it's twice the original height, not width. Well, whoops. Sorry about that. Twice the original height. There we go. All right. So again, I'm going to have the same, right, the, the zero height. This is all relative now to the x-axis, the origin, right? So twice in each direction. So I have a point at 1, uh, comma 0. So this is now going to be still 1, comma 0. And when I get twice as high, it's pulling it up and down. So it's actually going to look almost like it's thinner because it's getting twice as high. So that means this little gap gets stretched up, right? And the bigger gap gets stretched up more. So it's going to curve up faster. So it's going to look like something like this. So this is now, right, I did the multiply by 2. So this is 2 times f of 1 half times x uh, minus 1. And again, we're not artists, so I'm going to put in a couple points here. Namely, this 3 comma 1, because it's going to get the y value is twice as high, right? It's going to multiply the y value by 2, so it's going to get moved up to 3 comma 2 now. Okay. And last but not least, the very last thing we're doing, subtracting 2, which moves it down 2. So if I move this over this way. So. Again, I had 1 comma 0, so now when I go down 2, it's going to be at 1 comma negative 2, and it's going to go up. My 3 comma 2 is going to go to 0, so that's over here somewhere. So it's going to go like this and like that. Again, this is a sketch. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. So this is 2 times f of 1 half x minus 1, close the f, minus 2, right? And I can put in this is the point 1 comma negative 2, and my orange point, which is now right there, is the point 3 comma 0. Okay. And just to be very clear, this is my finished transform, meaning this is actually g of x. So I have now sketched g of x, right? So I did the x stuff, the y stuff, translated it into what the transforms or translation, rigid translation would be. Then I did the x stuff backwards, right? So I start with the beginning. So doing it backwards, I made it twice the original width. Then I moved it right one. Then this one I do in the original order, right? Y stuff works normal, X stuff is backwards. So then I multiply by two, which made it appear thinner because it actually, it actually skewed it up and down sharper, and then subtracted two, moved it down two. Okay, so that is how that is done. I'm gonna do a follow-up uh, in the next video where I'm going to say, okay, if we have this F of X and some G of X, that is this translation, uh, what point, like if I give you a point on F, 
how do you find a point on G and vice versa, okay? So that'll be the next video.